finally, we're looking at a Chinese dash camera with a proper sounding name. It's the Mini 3 by DDPi, and from all the Mini dash cameras I've reviewed so far, this is the most expensive one. You're looking at one of the most exciting discrete dash cameras ever done. It has a number of advantages that most of the other dash cams don't support yet. This is an award-winning device. It was being awarded by the IF Design 2018 for its unique and sleek design, and the competition was among more than 6,000 products from more than 50 countries worldwide, and it is quite an honor. First of all, let me start by saying what it does. Its essential functionality is of course to record the traffic, in most of the cases attached to your windshield. It records the captured video footage on its embedded internal EMMC card, so no, you don't have to buy an additional microSD. With the maximum supported resolution, it stays way above the current dashcam models because it can record up to 1600p which is 2688 by 1600 pixels. In theory, this is quite a significant upgrade to the 1080p resolution and is supposed to bring much more details, like twice more. But look at the estimation values in the settings screen. Indeed, the resolution is higher, but the bitrate is not twice higher. Well, this still delivers a more detailed image compared to Full HD. I think we can all agree that the essentials are well covered. Now let's explore where the extra budget goes to. Starting with the package, looks good, feels good and arrives with quite many accessories. I can only praise this one. Yes, it's a simple dual port USB adapter, but how many dashcam manufacturers would include such one with their dashcams? Not too many right now in 2018. I like a lot the windshield mount. It sticks with double-sided tape, but this is not necessarily a disadvantage and allows it to be placed as close as possible to the glass, which reduces the amount of flare and reflections and will guarantee better visibility. And this connector type is genius too. Taking it in and out is a matter of a few seconds. The possibility to easily detach the camera is quite good, believe it or not, in the country where I live. You never know who will be attracted by your dashcam and someday you may end up with broken window because someone liked it and decided to ungracefully take it from the car. One of the other extra features is the 24-7 surveillance possibility which can work if you provide constant wiring. To speed up the process, here's the brilliant package included by DDPi. Simply locate your fuse box and find where to feed those two wires with power. The hard wiring is, of course, a bit trickier, not as easy as connecting the micro USB port, but it could be done easily if you have the right level of preparation. We've got uh, two kinds of wiring, and, and here is my fuse box opened. So we have the red wire, which I, I have not connected yet, I've already connected the yellow wire. This one is called VCC, this one is called ACC. The VCC is supposed to provide constant power to the camera, uh, meaning that you, you gotta connect it to something which is um, connected to the cast battery all the time, no matter if the engine is on or off. The ACC wire, which is this one, um, it, it has to be connected to a device which uh, starts as soon as the engine is turned on, like the car radio, uh, the window controls, etc. etc. Uh, if you know your car goods, then you can certainly find uh, the right fuses. I've chosen as a constant power to use uh, the fuse for the front lights. And uh, for ACC, I have decided to use uh, the, fro the front window controls. And I've already wired the VCC. I'm gonna show you how to do that on the ACC. So the first thing is to take the fuse out. Okay. 
the fuse is already out then the cable that we get arrives with this pretty nice connector what we need to do is to put the fuse onto that connector with one hand it's not that easy done and we simply plug it to the fuse box just like that This is the exact part where things are becoming interesting. The parking monitoring function is different to most of the other dash cameras where it is triggered by the gravity sensor. The Mini 3 has intelligent voltage detection. When the car engine is on, the camera will automatically start recording. When the car engine is off, the hardware will detect the voltage drop and then the camera changes to parking mode, recording one frame per second, sort of time lapse. When the car battery voltage lowers than 12.4 or 12 or 11.8 and this is configurable through the app, the hardware will cut off the power automatically to preserve the car's battery. In addition, the defaulted maximum time of parking monitor is 24 hours, so no matter of the voltage value, the hardware kit will cut off the power automatically after a day. We didn't quite mention the hardware, a dual core High silicon chipset, Cortex A17 and A7 combine, guaranteeing excellent performance, sensor is Omnivision, the lens with f1.8 aperture and 140 degree field of view and configuration via the smartphone app. Apparently there is a lot of influence from Huawei engineering and I'm not surprised to see that many good things so far. We continue with the SR technology stands for Sense Reality. Based on a 6-axis gyroscope, the dashcam is collecting data about your trip, including acceleration, trajectory, deviation, and some of that is even visible via the smartphone app settings. Daylight footage is superb, so is the low light and the night footage. A lot of detail, sharp picture, good colors, there even is a way to reduce the fisheye effect via the settings in the app. I think that the video quality is up to par with the price tag. As for the audio, this is the sound quality as it is recorded with the Mini 3 by Diddy Pi and yes, at the moment, uh, holding the dash camera with my fingers because there's no possibility to tilt it around. I think the sound quality is pretty good, especially for a dash camera. And keep in mind, inside vehicles, sound is usually kind of weird. During the period of testing, although it's no longer summertime, no reasons to be concerned with the temperature. Even with the highest resolution, the device remains relatively cool. Most importantly, it has supercapacitor and not a battery, which makes it perfect for hot destinations where having a lithium-ion battery can significantly increase the risk of explosion and fire. I didn't pay too much attention to this remote button. Here it is, you can place it literally everywhere. The battery inside will last for at least a an year and it is used for marking the recorded files as protected and locked or to make a photo if you're at that setting. As soon as you have enough footage files, you may transfer those via the app or via USB cable connected to a computer and the latter one is of course the fastest option. The app on the other side is well equipped with features from picture adjustments to reviewing the SR data and fine-tuning the default behavior. I dislike the greeting at the start so it was one of the first things to change. In two words, simply excellent. I was pretty skeptical at the start after figuring out what the price is but now this clearly is a high-end dash camera and it has tons of features that others will be catching up in the next months and years. Let me share some more footage and in the meanwhile make sure to subscribe, takes just a single click and is for free. Liking and sharing will greatly help me to better maintain the channel and reach out to more people. Look around and find more reasons to smile, make a lot of good things and I'll see you soon. Cheers!